Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May his glory fill the whole earth. Amen and amen. Welcome to online worship this Sunday. It's so good to be with you all. Today, we're going to read the end of Joshua after reading the beginning last week, and we're going to talk about serving the Lord. Um, and Joshua says, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And that's what it means for our house to serve the Lord. Before we go there, uh, Stone Soup is doing around 600 meals for Thanksgiving. And if you would like to volunteer just for that or to get a taste of what they do, um, they could use a few volunteers, especially apparently to make sweet potato casserole. But if you want to serve in some other way, we can help you out there. So just let me know. And, and I should have information to share about that in the email below. I haven't seen it yet, but I am hoping to find it. Other than that, we uh, just welcome the opportunity to worship uh, in the fellowship hall, outdoors, and with you all today. God is still bringing us together as one church family, and it's a blessing. If you would calm your heart, silence your mind if you can. It's been a week full of full of busy minds and lots of thinking and lots of confusion. And if you could put that away for a moment and pray to God this morning. And this is a prayer from the hymnal. It is for the renewal of the church. Renew your church, O Lord, your people in this land. Save us from cheap words and self-deception in your service. In the power of your spirit, transform us and shape us by your cross. Amen. The scripture reading is from Joshua chapter 24, and, and the reading is from 1 to the beginning of verse 3, and then we go to 14 and go to verse 28. Hear these words. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and, and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went and among all the peoples through we, whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. 
the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak in the sanctuary of the Lord. Joshua said to all the people, See, this stone shall be a witness against us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord that he spoke to us. Therefore, it shall be a witness against you if you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent the people away to their inheritances. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have a, an acquaintance, a friend, who Aaron and I went to college with. And this person now works for political campaigns. That's their, their profession. And it seems like more, but since we've left college, there have been around four election cycles now, counting midterms. And although I do not keep in close touch with this person, just seeing on social media, I think they have moved back and forth to Washington, D.C. at least a couple times. It may just be once, but it seemed like, like several. And they have worked for several campaigns. And I have to admit, I, I'm a little fascinated by that lifestyle, but it seems hard to me. No, no stability, a, a profession where your whole life you can count on going from campaign to campaign, quadrennium and two-year cycle to quadrennium, serving uh, uh, and, and working for different candidates in each time, moving wherever um, the campaign takes you. It seems like a, a fascinating life, but also one that is hard to imagine sometimes. That, that amount of, of switching allegiances. Of course, it's a profession, and, I, and it's an important one. But it is a fluid sort of lifestyle. But as I thought about it, I realized, of course, that that's a little bit of what I do. Now, in the Methodist Church, we don't necessarily just move every four years like we used to, or every two years, or ride a circuit like, like our circuit rider ancestors. But I still will be moved, presumably at some point, maybe not. But I have, I, have, I have to take seriously if the bishop calls me and asks me to. And, <laughs> of course, we're all aware we all live through these sorts of cycles too. Every four years, or every two really, we're asked to vote. And if those candidates had their way, in addition to voting for them, we would also uh, help finance their campaigns. We would also knock on doors for them. We would also uh, put their uh, signs in our yard. Every few years, we go through this cycle as well. And look, politics is incredibly important. Who, who we vote for uh, determines people's livelihoods. It determines policy positions and allocation, it, it determines, for some people, life and death. But politics is fluid. We'll all have different yard signs and different bubbles to fill in in four years. It'll probably be a different name. What we are voting for and who we are voting for is fluid throughout our lives. It's, it's, we sort of switch allegiances. God is not fluid in that way. You, you may have heard part of the verse here where Joshua says, as for me and my, uh, this says household, you've probably heard house, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And along with Philippians 4, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is one of the signs or, or posters or prints that gets put up in people's kitchens, right? Or in their entryways. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And, and 
it's an important sentiment. It's an important reminder. I think it's a good sign. But it's worth remembering when we come to this text that that's not a sign you just put up for a season and take down with your Christmas decorations. It's not a print that you leave behind when you move to a new house. To say and to mean, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord, it's a commitment. A response to God in commitment of our lives, of our households, of our livelihoods, of our devotion. It's a lifelong commitment. And it is a community commitment. When Joshua is saying household, he, it is not just mom and dad and children and the dog. Household in the ancient world, it probably would have included enslaved people. Servants and livestock, the household would include property, land, flocks. It also would have included more than just parents and children. There'd be some extended family there. Uh, uh, grandparents and adult children and, and generations, aunts and uncles. I mean, a household is, is an extended family. How many of our extended families, if you think of your sort of extended family, how many could you really say, my household is serving the Lord? And I would imagine some of us have some relatives who would say that we're not serving the Lord because we're Methodists and not another denomination or something. How many of us could really commit our extended family to this claim? As Joshua puts it, this idea that my house is going to serve the Lord, it is not a claim to be taken lightly. It is a pledge of allegiance. A pledge of allegiance. It is a pledge to who we will serve, to whom our lives will be devoted. And if we do not serve God, what Joshua tells the people is that it will be a witness against them. We, I talked about it on a Wednesday a few weeks ago. There is something worse about saying you will do something and not doing it. Friends, there is something worse than evil, and it is evil trying to disguise itself as good. It is doing evil and saying, I'm doing the right thing. Joshua says it would be a witness against ourselves to say we will serve the Lord, to put it up on the wall, and then to serve other gods. Faith is not a decoration. It might be symbolized by one. Faith is not a yard sign. It is... A, a commitment of our lives to the one in whom there is life, in whom there is the only sort of life worth living. It is a commitment of our lives. I'm not going to belabor that point. You know it. We've got a church and an audience of this video, wherever you are, who I know is committed to service, has been told about loving their neighbor as we go about our lives, we should know by now to ask, who am I serving? Not just when we volunteer at the church or for another organization. Who am I serving with what I purchase at the grocery store or the clothes I wear? Who am I serving with my time? But you all know that. But one thing I want to talk about, this idea of of serving God with our whole lives is that it's not a chore. It's a blessing. It's not business. It is work sometimes, but it is not a chore. Because God commands us to Sabbath. Part of the way we serve God is by stopping sometimes, by resting today. 
by sitting down and recognizing that the fate of the world is not in our hands, it is in God's. Sabbath is an incredible thing. There's, there's a saying that idle hands are the devil's playthings. But I think in our world, in my experience, the devil wants to keep us busy. Wants to keep us distracted. Wants to stop us from asking, who is this serving? So if you're going to say, our house is going to serve the Lord, it's okay to take a break today. And during the week, too. And committing our household, our faith to God, asking who we serve, is not just about what we do, but where we do it. There's a saying that a house is not a home, right? Meaning it is the people within the house that make it a home. But a home is not a home without a house. Without the dwelling, the physical building. And although Joshua is talking about a household here, I think this text, especially the way it is used in our edifices, should help us think, how do, do our structures serve the Lord? When we've moved our in-person worship to the fellowship hall, it took some thinking to think about how do we arrange this. It may not seem so to you, or it may seem obvious, but our sanctuary was designed, the, the way it is framed is designed for worship. It is designed to serve God. And so we've tried to set up the fellowship hall in a way that helps us model how we serve God, <laughs> partially by allowing people to sit outside. We're modeling service to God. Uh, Aaron's been watching, and I have too, uh, some of these HGTV shows on, on Hulu. And I've learned a few phrases. I, I had heard the phrase man cave, but I didn't know the phrase bonus room. Everyone on these shows, they need open concept. They need a bonus room and, and, and maybe a den of some kind and a walk-in closet. And I had this thought, what if I turn my walk-in closet into a, a chapel, into a room for prayer, and what if I used it? I think my faith would get a little deeper. That is, that is one example. I'm not saying you all have to do that, but it's one example of how our space might help us serve God. I think of, of uh, German Christians who housed uh, Jewish people uh, during, during World War II. The use of our space, space is also an expression of our faith. And it's true as a church as well. I have been so thankful in, in Swepsonville with the way people have been invested in faithfully using the space. In some churches, as you all know, and you may have heard, changing things, it can be a chore, it can be a struggle, it can be contentious. And yet, you all, I think, have constantly asked, how will this space best serve the Lord? We've moved some storage upstairs here. We've moved my office so that, that the room downstairs can be for hospitality for visitors and people new to our community. You may not know it, but one of the classrooms in this church has been used to store food that safe cannot fit for, for almost a year now. We have constantly asked, how can we use our space? How can we serve the Lord? It's what we do. And so, put the verse on the wall. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. But take it seriously as a chance to evaluate, to ask who are we serving, and to let God inspire us to new ways to serve that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because, of course, we do not serve God alone. In fact, Joshua says, 
you cannot serve the Lord for he's a holy God. He's a jealous God. Trying to serve the Lord on our own is impossible. It's God who gives us enough faith to put the sign up. It's God who leads us to use these spaces for the good of the world. We need God's help. And it is in our baptism, whether you were baptized as an infant or an adult, where we were uh, symbolically or literally submerged and brought out to new life in Christ. We were joined with Christ. And that was a devotion of our whole lives, a symbolic submergence and rebirth to life in Christ. We didn't hold our real estate holdings above the water. We didn't hold our wallets above the water. We didn't hold our careers above the water. All of it was submerged in order to serve God. Remember your baptism today and look for ways and ask, who am I serving and how can I serve God? I don't think we have time to do the whole baptismal remembrance, but I will welcome you to say the Apostles' Creed with me, which was said at your baptism. And if, if anyone watching this has not been baptized, um, get in touch with me and talk about what it can mean to be reborn in Christ through baptism. Would you say the Apostles' Creed with me, and we will say the version where he descended to the dead. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Pray with me. Lord, help us to lead lives bathed in Christ. Help us to serve you with our lives, with our assets, with our property, with our church, Lord. May it all be in your service. Help us to truly devote our lives to you and not just to do it on the surface. Lord, we thank you for the ways you have already given us to serve you and ask that, that all the people of this world may come to know your saving power and the life that is in Jesus Christ. We pray all this in his name. Amen. Go in peace and serve God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.